first and most imp important questions to ask is what is artificial intelligence? The word is mm. being thrown around AGI, AI, mm. et cetera, et cetera. In, in simple terms, what is artificial intelligence? So as, as a young geek, I coded computers by solving the problem first, then telling the computer how to solve it, right? Artificial intelligence is to go to the computers and say, I have no idea, you figure it out, okay? So we would, uh, uh, you know, the way we teach them, or at least we used to teach them at the very early beginnings very, very frequently was using three bots. One was called the student and one was called the teacher, right? And the student is the final artificial intelligence that you're trying to teach intelligence to. You would take the student and you would write a piece of random code that says, uh, try to detect if this is a, a cup, okay? And uh, then you show it a million pictures and you know the machine would sometimes say, yeah, that's a cup, that's not a cup, that's a cup, that's not a cup. And then you take the best of them, show them to the, to the teacher bot and the teacher bot would say, this one is an idiot. He got it wrong 90% of the time. That one is average. He got it right 50% of the time. This is randomness. But this interesting code here, which could be, by the way, totally random. Huh? This interesting code here got it right 60% of the time. Let's keep that code, send it back to the maker, and the maker would change it a little bit, and we repeat the cycle. Okay? Very interestingly, this is very much the way we taught our children. Believe it or not, huh? when when your child, you know, is playing with a puzzle, he's holding a cylinder in his hand, and there are multiple shapes in a in a wooden board, and the child is trying to, you know, fit the cylinder. Okay, nobody takes the child and says, "Hold on, hold on, turn the cylinder to the side, look at the cross section. It will look like a circle. Look for a matching, uh, uh, you know, shape, and put the cylinder through it." That would be old way of computing. The way we would let the child develop intelligence is we would let the child try, okay? Every time, you know, he or she tries to put it within the star shape, it doesn't fit. So, yeah, that's not working. Like, you know, the computer saying this is not a cup, okay? And then eventually it passes through the circle and the child, and we all cheer and say, well done, that's amazing, bravo. And then the child learns, oh, that is good. You know, this shape fits here. Then he takes the next one and she takes the next one and so on. Interestingly, uh, the way we do this hmm, is as humans, by the way, when the child figures out how to pass a cylinder through a circle, you've not built a brain. You've just built one neural network within the child's brain. And then there is another neural network that knows that one plus one is two and a third neural network that knows how to hold a cup and so on. That's what we're building so far. We're building single threaded neural networks you know, ChatGPT is becoming a little closer uh, to a more generalized AI, if you want. Uh, but those single threaded networks are what we used to call artificial, what we still call artificial special intelligence. Okay. So it's highly specialized in one thing and one thing only, but doesn't have general intelligence. And the moment that we're all waiting for is a moment that we call AGI, where all of those neuron net, neural networks come together to, to build one brain or several brains that are each uh, massively more intelligent than humans. Your book is called Scary Smart. Yeah. If I think about the that story you said about your time at Google where the machines were learning to pick up those yellow balls, you celebrate that moment because the objective no. is accomplished? No? No, that was the moment of realization. This is when I decided to leave. So so you see, the, the thing is, I know for a fact hmm, uh, that at that most of the people I worked with who are geniuses uh, always wanted to make the world better, okay? Uh, you know, we've just heard of Jeffrey Hinton uh, leaving recently. Uh, Jeffrey Hinton, give, give some context to that. Jeffrey is sort of the grandfather of AI, one of the very, very senior figures of, of, of AI at, uh, at Google. Uh, you know, we, we all believe very strongly that this will make the world better. And it still can, by the way. Hmm? Uh, there is a scenario, uh, possibly uh, a likely scenario, where we live in a utopia, where we really never have to worry again, where we stop messing up our, our planet because intelligence is not a bad commodity. 
more intelligence is good. The problems in our planet today are not because of our intelligence. They are because of our limited intelligence. You know, our, our intelligence allows us to build a machine that flies you to Sydney so that you can surf, okay? Our limited intelligence makes that machine burn the planet in the process. So, so we, 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 a little more intelligence is a good thing. Hmm? As long as Marvin, uh, you know, as Marvin Minsky said, uh, I said Mar Marvin Minsky is one of the very initial uh, uh, scientists that coined the term AI. Uh, and when he was interviewed, I think by Ray Kurzweil, which again is a very prominent figure in predicting the future of AI, uh, he, he, you know, he asked him about the threat of AI and Marvin basically said, look, you know, the, it's not about its intelligence, it's uh, intelligence, it's about that we have no way of making sure that it will have our best interest in mind, okay? Sex dolls that can now... Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, no, 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 hold on. Human connection is going to become so difficult to, to, to parse out. Think about the, relation, the relationship impact of being able to have a, a, a sex doll or a doll in your house that, you know, because of what Tesla are doing with their, their robots now and what Boston Dynamics have been doing for many, many years, can do everything around the house and be there for you emotionally, to emotionally support you. You, you know, can be programmed to never disagree with you. It can be programmed to challenge you, to have sex with you, to tell you that you are this X, Y, and Z, to, to really have empathy for this, what you're going through every day. And I, I play out a scenario in my head, I go, kind of sounds nice. <laughs> When you when you when you were talking about it, I was thinking, oh, that's my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's wonderful in every possible yeah. way, but not everyone has one of her, right? Yeah, exactly. And and, 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 there's, and and there's a real issue right now with dating, and 100%. you know, people are, people are finding it harder to find love, and you know, we're working longer, so all these kinds of things. You go, well, and obviously, I'm against this. Just if anyone's confused, obviously, I think this is a terrible idea. But with a loneliness epidemic, with people saying that the top fifty bottom fifty percent of men haven't had sex in a year. You go, oh, if something becomes indistinguishable from a human in terms no, of what it says than and a speaks. Human. Yeah, yeah, but you just don't know the difference in terms of the, 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 the way it's speaking and talking and responding. And then it can run errands for you and take care of things and book cars and Ubers for you. And then it's emotionally there for you. But then it's also programmed to have sex with you in whatever way you desire. Totally self selfless. I go, that's going to be a, a really disruptive industry for human connection. Yes, sir. Do you know what? I, before you came here this morning, I was on Twitter and I saw a post from, I think it was the BBC or a, a big American publication. And it said an influencer in the United States, this really beautiful young lady has cloned herself as an AI. And she made just over $70,000 in the first week because men are going on to this on Telegram. They're sending her voice notes and she's responding. The AI is responding in her voice and they're paying. And it's made $70,000 in the first week. And I go, and she tweeted a tweet saying, oh, this is gonna help loneliness. Are you out of your fucking mind? Um, would you blame someone from noticing the uh, uh, sign of the times and responding? No, I absolutely don't blame her, but let's not pretend it's the cure for loneliness. Not yet. Do, do, you, think it, do you think it could? You, that, that artificial love and artificial relationships. So, so if, if I told you, you have, uh, you cannot take your car somewhere, but there is an Uber or an, if you cannot take an Uber, you can take the tube or if you cannot take the tube, you have to walk. Okay, you can take a bike or you, you have to walk. The bike is a cure to walking. It's as simple as that. I am actually genuinely curious. Do you think it could take the place of human connection? For some of us, yes. For some of us, they will prefer that to human connection. Is that sad in any way? I mean, is it just sad because it feels sad? Look, look at where we are, Stephen. We are in the city of London. We've replaced nature with the walls and the tubes and the undergrounds and the overgrounds and the cars and the noise and the of London. And we now think of this as natural. I, I, I hosted Greg Foster, uh, the uh, my octopus teacher on on slow mo, and he. He basically, I, I asked him a question, silly question. I said, uh, you know, you were diving in nature for eight hours a day. Uh, uh, you know, does that feel natural to you? And he got angry. I swear, you could feel it in his voice. He was like, 
do you think that living where you are, where paparazzi are all around you and attacking you all the time and, you know, um, people taking pictures of you and telling you things that are not real and you having to walk to a supermarket to get food, do you think this is natural? He's the guy that dove from the Netflix for, documentary. Yeah, from the, my octopus teacher. So he dove into the into the sea every day to- For eight hours. To, yeah. to hang out with an octopus. In, yeah, in 12 degrees Celsius. And he basically fell in love with the octopus. And 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 in a very interesting way, I, I said, so why would you do that? And he said, we are of mother nature. You guys have given up on that. That's the same. Hmm? People will give up on nature for convenience. What's the cost? Uh, you t Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say to the world is that if we give up on human connection, we've given up, given up on the remainder of humanity. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.